Hello and welcome to University Christian Church. We're so glad that you have chosen to join us today for worship. And we hope that this service is uh, meaningful and it uplifts your spirit. Uh, here at University Christian Church, we believe uh, with all that we are that God's love is big enough, that it is wide enough, that it is inclusive enough for everyone. And that includes you. So we're glad that you are here today. My name is Russ Peterman. And it is my deep joy and great privilege to welcome you to worship. As we gather together for worship today, even if we're apart, I hope that you will take time to register your attendance. Go to our website at universitychristian.org live, and there you'll have a chance to register your attendance. There's also a place to let us know of any prayer concerns that you may have. You can download the worship bulletin. You can give your offerings and your tithes. And as we enter into this time of worship, I want to invite you to engage deeply. Uh, don't just watch, but lean in. Sing the hymns, pray the prayers, uh, gather some elements for communion and we'll share together uh, in a little while. But be in worship with your brothers and sisters of faith. We're starting a new series this morning, looking at the Psalms. We're calling it, God is Holding Your Life. We're looking at the Psalms, which were the prayers of the people that run the gamut from uh, grateful praise to, to gut-wrenching pleas for help. Throughout this poetry, though, runs a thread that we will see, and that is that you can trust God with your life. In this series, we'll take a break from all of the worry and the anxiety and the distress that life in this moment can throw at us, and just let the holy assurance of God Hold us fast. Church, it's good for us to be together even if we're apart. And let us now worship together. Please join me in the call to worship. God is found among us. Whenever two or three are gathered in Christ's name, God is present. Come, let us worship the God of creation, the God of people, the God of community. Let us worship together in faith. Please remain standing as we join our voices in song, singing the processional hymn number 18, All People That on Earth Do Dwell.
as we turn to God in prayer, I want to remind you and encourage you to submit any prayer concerns that you might have so that we can join you in prayer. We can pray with you and for you. Any concerns or joys if you are anticipating a surgery um, or just anything that's on your heart, let us know. We would love to pray for you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. God, our sustainer, as we gather together in your presence with expectation, with doubts, with fears, with joy, with anxiety, with exhaustion, and with anticipation, we trust that you meet us wherever and however we are. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit that connects us at all times and in all places. God, while we rest in your divine presence, we lift up those for whom rest might seem unattainable. For the teacher, who spent hours decorating her vacant classroom, who won't meet her students in person for weeks and may never meet some of them, who will only see the smiling faces of children on a computer screen, we ask for your blessing. For the parent who has become a full-time tutor, who misses the routine and the freedom of pick up and drop off, who has had to sacrifice his own pursuits to stay home with his child. We ask for your blessing. For the child who is closer to college than kindergarten, whose visions of prom and graduation have become murky, who just want a normal year, we ask for your blessing. For the professor who is learning on the fly, whose lesson plans and teaching methods are changing daily, who is trying to understand, we ask for your blessing. For the college freshman who is moving into the dorm, who is eager to make friends and find community, who worries they might have to return home, we ask for your blessing. For the parent who is sending their child to college, who is concerned about their health and safety, who is worried they might be home in two weeks, we ask for your blessing. For the students whose universities are closed, for the freshmen who won't get to move into their dorm, and for the upperclassmen who just want to see their friends, we ask for your blessing. For the recent graduates who are searching for a job, who are exhausted from interviews and applications, who are waiting on that phone call, we ask for your blessing. For the administrators who are developing plans, who know that with whatever choice they make, someone will be upset who just want safety and security for their teachers and students, we ask for your blessing. For the custodians and the food service providers and the maintenance staff who are working on overdrive, who are doing their best to create a healthy environment, who are worried that they might get sick or furloughed, we ask for your blessing. For all who are disappointed and all who are excited. For all who are angry and all who are hopeful. For all who are afraid and all who are eager. For all who are weary and seeking rest. We lift them up to you in prayer and ask for your blessing. As we join together in saying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we are kicking off this morning a series on the Psalms. The Psalms are oftentimes known as the prayer book of the Hebrew people. And they run the gamut from from thankful praise to gut-wrenching pleas from help, for protection. Part of what the Psalms offer us is an opportunity to express a wide range of emotions. And along different moments in our faith journey, at the heart of these expressions, from our most elated praise to our deepest lament, is this theme that runs through that God is holding our lives. Now, I've noticed in these unsettling, interesting times that we find ourselves in that are filled with stress and worry and anxiety, just all of the unknowing, that I've been having a hard time concentrating. Staying focused. So when I sit down to read, I read for three or four pages, and then then my mind starts to wander and worry. And so I have found the Psalms, which tend to be short, they tend to be concise, to be very helpful at this time. They're just about the right length to allow me to focus. And so I have found them in these last several months to be a faithful prayer partner. Today, we're going to be looking at Psalm 121. It's a psalm that many read as an assurance when times are difficult, and and rightly so. It's also a psalm that reminds us of God's protection, keeping of our lives, and the promise that God will keep us from harm. Now, the, the structure of this psalm is elegantly simple. Scholars believe that there are essentially two voices that that are present in this psalm, more than likely it was read as a blessing for one as they prepare to go out on a journey, a a pilgrimage, if you will. Either that or it was sung by the pilgrims uh, that were on their way to the temple in Jerusalem for one of the three annual festivals that took place each year. Now, the first voice that you will hear is the voice of the pilgrim, and you will hear that voice in the first two verses. And the second voice comes probably from a priest or someone that was sending these pilgrims out on their journey. That is found in verses 3 through 8. At the beginning, the pilgrim asks and answers their own question, where will my help come from? And then saying that their help, his or her help, will come from God the Creator. And that confession was followed by what was likely a a blessing for the journey that was about to be embarked on. The pilgrim is reminded that God indeed is watching over them that will provide protection, protection from the hot sun, protection from the dangers of traveling, especially at night. And as we get to the final two chapters, final two verses, we are told that God will indeed protect them. And so listen now to this holy and sacred word. Today's scripture reading is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This psalm is oftentimes referred to as the traveler's psalm. One commentary refers to it as a psalm for sojourners. 
I have a friend who anytime he and his family are getting ready to go on a, on a road trip or, or a journey of any type, they, they gather together and they recite this psalm together as a, as a way of blessing their journey. The traveler's psalm is well suited for a time of, of farewell. But I would suggest too that the, that the movement of the psalm hints at a wider application. This whole idea of referring to life as a journey. It's a sojourn, if you will. Life as a journey is a, is a relatively familiar theme in the Bible. When Jacob met Pharaoh, he said sort of with a sigh, the years of my earthly sojourn are 130 Another psalmist prays, uh, Hear my prayer, O Lord, for I am your passing guest, a sojourner just like all of my forebears. And the New Testament refers to uh, the lives of Abraham and Sarah as sojourners, always, ever on the way. And the call of Jesus was never to, to gather around or to listen to me, but always follow me. To be a disciple means that we are constantly on the move, on the go, that we are growing, that we are learning, that we are doing, that we are going. Now, I will admit that the whole life is a journey is a little bit cliche. This whole idea of us always on the way, even if it's true. I think most of us would much rather prefer to think of life as, as a circle, the circle of life with us in the center and all of our friends and our family gathered around us. But that's not always how it works, is it? We are always on some sort of a journey. Oftentimes it's a more personal or more developmental type of journey, like becoming a parent, sending your kids off to college, going back to school, taking a new job, trying to figure out what God would have us do with our life. And some of our journey is to discover a new normal after a loss, whether it be the loss of a loved one, a job, a marriage, some sort of disruption. <laughs> we know about disruption, don't we? We are all on that journey these days, are we not? And so in the middle of this pandemic, as, as the death toll continues to rise and the economy continues to stutter, millions of people out of work, in the midst of this turmoil, the anxiety, the stress of it all, the fear, as we try to figure out how to manage and, and navigate this pandemic, we could all use a little blessing a little assurance that we'll be okay, to sense God's protection, that God will indeed, as the psalmist says, keep us and keep us safe. And so we are all looking towards the hills, the sign of and symbol of, of the steadfast presence of God. We're all looking to the hills for some sort of reassurance. And so we are all asking in some way, shape, or form, either out loud or privately in our prayers, where will our help come from? I think a big reason that this time is so difficult is that we don't know how this ends. We don't have an end point. Mac Engel, a local sports columnist, wrote a piece a few weeks ago for the Star-Telegram here in Fort Worth. The piece was about college football, but it had wider applications. It was, it was bigger than that. And the metaphor that he used was when he talked about how when explorer Robert Falcon Scott made his bed, bid to become the first ever person to reach the South Pole back in 1910, that he and his team of sled dogs uh, trekked over, over ice and snow for days and weeks. While the South Pole is a point, it's not really a place that you can see on the horizon. That part of the world is pretty barren, as you can imagine, miles and miles of, of nothing on the horizon. And so after, after a couple of days, when the journey continued towards this empty horizon, with no visible point of destination, the, the dogs became unmotivated, listless, 
that just didn't run as fast as they could. They lost interest in doing the one thing that they were created to do. Engel's point, and I totally agree, is that we are currently all sled dogs on this expedition through the COVID-19 endless terrain that we find ourselves in that we are currently pulling a sled in the fog towards this speck on the horizon that we can't see. You know, the truth is, is that anyone who tells you that they know how this ends, that this is the destination, they're not being honest. Because even the experts are making expert educated guesses at best. And it's hard to make a journey when you don't have a destination. There are elements about this moment that no one knows where we're headed. And at first it looked like this was just gonna be an extended spring break, that things were gonna get back to normal relatively soon. We said things like, when this is all over, and now here we are five, six months into it, in August, is starting to feel a whole lot like April. It's just a whole lot harder. The truth is, no one really knows ultimately what the rest of 2020 looks like. Nobody has any idea what 2021 will look like, when we'll get back to some sort of normalcy. And so we are just sort of trudging along, pulling our sled towards this point on the horizon that we just can't see. You know, part of my job as the senior minister of this congregation is to be able to look towards the future and to speak a prophetic word, to cast a vision about where we are headed as a community of faith. And then, then help us, lead us, work together as a, as a congregation to, to make that future become a reality. But if I'm honest, I am as unnerved as anybody I'm not sure where this road takes us any more than you or anyone else does. Some of you know El Arroyo, the Mexican food place down in Austin that has become famous for the, the clever sayings that they put on their sign. It's one of my favorite follows on Instagram these days. And they put this one up a few weeks ago and it really resonated with me. I'd like to announce that I have no idea what I am doing. <laughs> it's hard to make a journey when you aren't sure where you're going. But still, we have to keep going. We have to keep pulling that sled, putting one foot in front of the other, traveling, journeying towards God only knows. And along the way, we need to be willing to take chances, to make mistakes, to try new things, to not be afraid to fail. And so maybe this psalm is exactly what we need in this moment, a, a reminder of the assurance of God that wherever we go, whatever journey we find ourselves in, that the God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth is holding our lives. You see, the psalmist is saying that the God of us all is big enough to trust yet personal enough to care. And so in this moment, when we may not know where we are going, here is what we can know. Here is what we can trust. That even if we don't know what the future holds, we do know who holds the future. And so friends, friends, as you go about the journey that you are on, may God keep your foot from slipping. And may he not slumber nor sleep. And may you make room in your journey for the, for the protection and the spirit of God to be more easily known in your life. And may you trust the one who is trustworthy and faithful. And may you be blessed by the goodness and the grace of God who loves us all and is holding our lives. Amen.
Good morning. I'm sure you remember that wonderful ritual that we shared here in the sanctuary, passing the peace of Christ. We're going to do it again today, and if you are sharing worship wherever you are with someone, uh, you can hug that person all you want. And if you are worshiping alone, then maybe you can text a friend and say, may the peace of Christ be with you. Uh, however you do it, let us now Give thanks to God and pass the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. I wonder what you've been learning, what God has been teaching you during this um, strange time about generosity. I wonder if you've learned to see the little things, to give thanks to God for small blessings. Perhaps our attention is different now, this focus we have on making it through this challenging time. Today, I want to thank you for your generosity to the church because in big ways and in small ways, you are making it possible for University Christian Church to continue to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, to bless our neighbors in the community here and around the world, and we are grateful for your generosity. Let us give thanks to God for God's great blessings to us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. This morning as we gather at the table, I want to give thanks to the Holy Spirit for being present with us through these changing times. In some ways, you can think of the Holy Spirit as the original church consultant. And through the centuries, it has been the spirit, the creative spirit, that has allowed us to adapt, to innovate, to consider new ways to be together in changing times. It is the work of the Holy Spirit every Sunday that makes it possible for us to worship in separate places and yet feel the presence of the rest of our faith community. It is the work of the Holy Spirit that inspires the ways that we do ministry, that we reach out, that we can be church even beyond 
the Fort Worth area, that we can welcome in worshipers from all around the world every Sunday morning. How exciting. The Spirit also is present with us as we engage in this sacrament and understand a meaning that is significant for us and for the church. Today we remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. After giving thanks for the bread, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had finished eating, Jesus took the cup. He blessed it and he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you break the bread and share the cup in my name, remember me. Let us pray. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son to bless the bread and wine before us for the souls of all those who receive them that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the sacrifice of your Son and witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, to always remember him and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Now join me as we take the bread. And the cup. Good morning. I'm Stacy McCoy, Membership Engagement Coordinator here at University Christian Church, and I have a couple of things to share with you today. Next Sunday, August the 23rd, begins our next session of our Newcomers class. We call it UCC and U, and it's designed for our guests, for our new members, and for our potential members to learn a little more about our church and our ministries. It's August 23rd through September 13th via Zoom, and we would love for you to join us. To get the details, go to our website or feel free to email or call us at the church. Speaking of new members, we have eight to introduce today. Please welcome Richard and Leslie Disler, Britt Fike and Kelly Runyon Fike, Reese Hardy, Candy Clifton, and Cindy Peters, and Lori Russell. We're so happy to have all of you as part of our church family, and we look forward to pursuing our vision of transforming the world by living out Christ's courageous love. Again, we want to thank you for joining us today and hope that the service has been meaningful and that your spirit has been uplifted. In these crazy and uncertain times, I know that there are many of you, including Kelly and I, who are getting ready to send kids back to college, back to school. And these are exciting times, but also anxious times. And so we want you to know that you will be in our prayers Quick word, too, to the TCU community that starts school this week. We hope and pray that you have a very safe and wonderful year ahead, and that you wash your hands, that you'll wear your mask, that you'll practice social distancing. Together, we can make this work. And now, friends, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face continue to shine upon you. And may you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are being held in the very palm of God's hand. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace.